Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Walter Houston, Anne Blythe, and Vincent Price in Another Part of the Forest. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeling. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's play, Another Part of the Forest, you may have a strange feeling that you've met the principal characters before. If so, it was in The Little Foxes, as both plays were written by Lillian Hellman. They were hits on Broadway and, later, successful on the screen. In another part of the forest, Miss Hellman begins the story of her famous Hubbard family one generation before the time of the Little Foxes and exposes the roots of conflict and hate that resulted in their later savagery. Walter Houston heads our cast tonight as the father of this remarkable family, with Vincent Price as one of his sons and Anne Blythe as his daughter. The same part Anne played in the universal international success. The time of the story is 1880, when the Surrey with the fringe on top dashed by, graced by ladies wearing the then new look. There were no automobiles, no radios, and no Lux Flakes. How different things are now. The carriage is a museum piece, you're listening to the Lux Radio Theater on the radio, and the now new look looks new longer with Lux Flakes. It's curtain time for another part of the forest, starring Walter Houston as Marcus Hubbard, Anne Blythe as Regina, and Vincent Price as Ben. It's a spring morning in a little southern town some 70 years ago. At the edge of Lionette Plantation, John Bagtree has a visitor. But you shouldn't have come here, Regina. What if your father should find out? Papa won't find out. Besides, if I didn't come here, I'd never see you, would I? How were the ceremonies this morning? Did you make a speech? You know what Confederate Day is like, Regina. Papa says it's a waste of time. He says the war ended 15 years ago. Some people don't find it so easy to forget. Like you, John? Maybe. Or like old Colonel Asham. His whole speech this morning was about the massacre. Those 27 men from Bowdoin killed in camp while they slept. You think they'd let them rest in peace instead of fretting about it all these years? It's not that they were killed. It's how they were killed. Someone right here in Bowdoin betrayed them, took money from the Yankees and led them to the camp. Seems to me you're trying awful hard to avoid the subject. What subject? Well, maybe you forgot you were supposed to meet me last night. I... I couldn't, Regina. I, I couldn't leave Aunt Clara and Cousin Bertie. After supper, they wanted to sit out and talk. Not meeting me because of those two dried-up mummies. Why... It's just insulting. I've been living off them ever since the war. It's the least I could do. I got a good mind to tell them that the war's over. The old times are finished and so are they. Why, my papa could buy and sell Lionette Plantation on the same morning. It's cotton and it's women with it. I wouldn't like to hear anybody talk that way again. Oh, oh I'm sorry, darling. I, I'm just mad about last night because I had something special to tell you. I've got a wonderful plan for us, John, and I've got Papa almost ready for it. I want you to meet him. I know your Papa, honey, from the store, and your brother Ben and Oscar. But Papa's so different at home. Oh, you will come. Say yes, darling. Please. Oh, please. I always do, don't I? No matter what I want or think, I always do. Yes, darling. Aren't you going to kiss me, John? Hello, Papa. Ben was on time, Benjamin? Yes, on time. 
Yeah, where well, are all the customers, Papa? Never seen the store so empty. Oh, yes, but it's Confederate Day, isn't I'll it? I'll run my store, Benjamin, as I see fit, holiday or no holiday. Of course, Papa. But I don't think folks will love you for it. Mm-hmm. How are things in Mobile? When I was only there for 24 hours, you ordered me back. Did I? What for, I wonder? I went to Mobile, Papa, because Horace Giddens said he could get me a few shares of Birmingham coal. I wanted to invest $2,000. Why? Because $2,000 will make $50,000 someday. Mm-hmm. But what if the company can't sell their coal? What if the people you're lending money to can't sell their cotton? And I'll have their land. It's kind of pleasant living on a plantation. Plantation like, uh, well, like Lionette. <laughs> Would you like to live in a coal mine? Well, I couldn't raise the money anyway. I suppose you haven't changed your mind about uh, lending it to me? Lionette was a beautiful house. Very gracious. Very well conceived. No, Benjamin, I'd rather hold my money for the day the Bagtrees come for a loan on Lionette. <laughs> then you'll hold it a mighty long time, Papa. The Bagtrees would sooner starve. Why didn't you ask Giddens to lend you the money, Ben? I thought he was so fond of you. He's fond of the whole family, especially Regina. But unfortunately, my dear sister's not very encouraging. Now, you're getting dull, Ben. I'd hoped you went to Mobile to see a lady. Pick up your bag. Time of getting home for lunch. I'm so glad you're home, Ben. I miss you when you're gone. Thank you, Mama. Oscar, where were you this morning? Me, Papa? Uh, don't you remember? I was out trying to make collections. Oscar, boy, when you tell a lie, at least respect my intelligence <laughs> and lie more convincingly. Oscar can't help it, Papa. He's just got the kind of face that shows everything. You mind your own <laughs> business, Regina. Please, children. Please. You're at the memorial grounds, Oscar. Y- yes, Papa. Against my wishes. Lavinia? Where's the salt? You you know, Marcus. No, I don't know. Where's the salt? It's Confederate Day, Papa. Mama never eats salt on Confederate Day. Carly? Yes, Mr. Hubbard? Go and get the salt. Yes, sir. I I reckon I forgot it. No, you didn't forget it. Mrs. Hubbard told you to keep it off the table. Lavinia, if you insist on acting crazy, that's your privilege. But I want salt on my table today and every day. Thank you, Carly. Have some salt, Regina? Thank you, Papa. Salt, Oscar? Yes, sir. Pass it to your brother. Tastes fine to me as it is, Papa. Did you hear about the bag trees, Papa? They're getting a loan on Lionette Plantation. From whom? Who'd loan them money? Sam Taylor, that too. A dirty carpet bag up from Boston. <laughs> well, Papa, it looks like the bag trees can keep their gracious home without even starving. Oh, I'm so glad for them, Marcus. They've had such a hard time. How does that concern you? Well, it... Doesn't really, Marcus. I only. Mr. Gina, here's Jake with your boxes. Bring them here, Jake. Woo! Pretty boxes. What's in them? Dresses, silly. Five boxes of dresses? Certainly would like to know what you're going to look like with them all, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to wear them for you, darling. Oh, they're charming, Papa. Wait till you see them. I'll help you try them on right after lunch, dear. Well, Papa and I are going for a walk after lunch, aren't we, darling? How much did they cost, Regina? I don't know. I didn't even ask. Rich people up north don't act that way. They watch their money and their father's money. Oh, what do you know about it? Just the other day, those people in Chicago gave their daughter a $50,000 check for a trousseau. A trousseau? Oh, is that what you've been buying, honey? Well, that reminds me, Regina. I asked Horace Giddens to Papa's music evening tomorrow night. You didn't. You're 20 years old, honey. You ought to be settling down. You've been worrying us. Sashaying around as open as... Oh, some... shut your mouth. Oscar's right. Isn't that so, Mama? Regina, what's this all about? I'm sure I don't know, Papa. Nothing at all. Well, if you think it's nothing at I all... I told be... you once before, Oscar, shut your mouth. Shut. Oh, why must we always be fighting like this? Why can't we have peace in our home? The way a family should. Today of all days. Stop crying over your food, Lavinia, if you want it to remain unsalted. Whee! Look what Coralie's bringing in. It's a cake, a birthday cake. Birthday cake? Why, why, yes, Mama, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Miss Vinnie. Oh, thank you, Coralie. Happy birthday, Miss Vinnie. Thank you, Jake. Congratulations, Lavinia. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, Happy happy birthday, birthday, Mama. Happy birthday, Mama. Thank you, children. Well, here's hoping a wedding cake will be next. What's that? Huh? Oh, nothing, Papa. Just talking. Talking nonsense, like always. Why? 
You can't have a wedding without a cake, honey. You know that. A cake and a trousseau. I don't know what all this talks about. Spoiling Papa's day. Come on, darling. Let's take a nice long walk, just you and me. We haven't done that for a long time. No, not for a long time. <laughs> Something amuses you, Ben? <laughs> oh, oh, no, Papa. Telegraph no. Horace Giddens. Your sister does not wish to see him here tomorrow night. I'll bring my Aristotle, Regina. You'll read in English, and I'll follow you in Greek. Marcus, uh, but it's my birthday, and you promised... Promised? I promised what? The money, Marcus. You promised to give me the money to build the hospital. You promised last year on my birthday, I'm too. Going out now, Lavinia. But we've waited too long as it is. Another day, my dear. Well, that's what you said last year. And the year before that, you said you were too busy. I'm still busy. <laughs> never gonna learn, Ben. Been living with Papa for 31 years and never gonna learn. Learn what, honey? Ben, you got a few dollars to lend me? You want some money, Oscar? <laughs> Just tell Papa Ben don't want you to have it, and you'll get it. Think so? Now, don't you know that Papa always does whatever you tell him not to do? Unless, of course, I tell him to do it. Mm, you must give me a nice long lecture on Papa Regina, why he's so good to you and how you've managed and <laughs> so on. I'm busy now taking him on a walk. And I'll be busy when I get back. I'm going away, Ben. I'm going to Chicago, and once I get He's there... He's consented I'll... to the trip? He will, by the time we're back from our walk. You'll never get out of this house. And you'll never get away from Papa. He's most devoted to you, you know, honey. I'll make out. I always have. Not unless you take my advice. Horace Giddens is in love with you. <laughs> want me to marry money for you, darling? Of course I want you to marry money. Why don't you take it up with Papa? I wouldn't like to be in the house the day you do. Or the day he hears the gossip about you and uh, John Bagdry? Shut up, Ben. Is uh, Bagdry going to be in Chicago, too? Look, Ben, don't start anything. I'll get you in trouble if you do. Real bad trouble. <laughs> I'm going for a walk, Oscar. Well, what do you want? Would you like to borrow a good book? A book? Yeah, I didn't suppose so. You don't favor reading, do you, Oscar boy? Well, I would, Papa, only Ben keeps me so busy at the store. Well, there's time outside the store if you weren't the laziest man in town. Well, Ben don't read neither. Mm -hmm. Should I be pleased to have two ignorant sons instead of one? Well, what I mean, Papa, Ben keeps driving me all the time, never lets me do what I want. Now, all I wanted was five dollars. Five measly old dollars. Maybe Ben didn't have it. Papa, please. I, I, I got to go out tonight. I, I gave my word of honor as a gentleman. Uh, I, uh, uh, are you a gentleman, Oscar? Yes, sir. I mean... Oscar, uh, this news about Sam Taylor. Has he already given the money to the bag trees? I don't think so, Papa. I don't know. I, I kind of overheard them at the ceremonies this morning, but they wouldn't let me stay. They, they told me to get away. But they didn't object to Taylor's presence. Well, that's what I told them, Papa. Yes. I said it's So you let yourself be disgraced in front of a Yankee. Oh, I'm not finished with Taylor. Not by a long shot. I got a good mind to pay him a visit, carrying a gun. Spoken like a true gentleman, Oscar. When I see an old carpetbagger coming down here, I mean to do something about it. <laughs> Go on about your business. And, uh, oh, here... Uh, Here's twenty dollars. Whee, Papa, thank you. And uh, should you see Mr. Taylor, try to remember that though ignorance becomes a southern gentleman, cowardice does not. Yes, sir, Papa. I'll remember. Ben? Is that you, Ben? Where you going? I'm going to the store, Mama. You made me very happy, dear, coming home for my birthday. Huh? Oh, uh, yes, Mama. I'm sorry about the fussing at lunch. About the salt, I mean. But there's got to be one little thing you'll want to do that nobody keeps you from. Why did you pick this day, Mama? Because it's your birthday or because it's Confederate Day? I don't like to talk about it, Ben. Why? Everybody knows Papa made all his money selling salt during the war. But they don't know it was my fault. Our people were dying for salt, Ben. I, I thought it'd be a kindness for him to run the blockade. 
Only I didn't think he'd be charging eight dollars a bag for it. <laughs> a tiny little one-pound bag. <laughs> making money out of other people's misery. <laughs> when I found out, I, I wanted to leave him. I, I was so ashamed. Well, why didn't you, Mama? Marriage is a pledge, Bill. <laughs> A Christian woman has a duty to that promise. Yeah, a woman has a duty to other things, too. That's right. To her conscience. That's why he's got to give me the money to build the hospital. He don't want any of us to have money, Mama. Least of all for a hospital. Oh, but he does. He knows I have to. Uh, before this day's over, he'll come and give me the money. You'll see. Yes, Mama. He'll come. He'll come to tell you you're going to Chicago with Regina. Regina's going to Chicago? Not if you refuse to go with her. They, uh, they have good doctors in Chicago, Mama. Ben, what are you talking about? Well, if, uh, if somebody were to tell a doctor that a person was acting funny, was frightened all the time, had crying spells for no reason, strange quirks like, uh, not using salt on a certain days. Ben, but I have reasons, good reasons. And it's not just making money out of salt. I could tell the doctor how... What, Mama? Because there's plenty Regina can tell him. But if you say no, Mama, they can't make you go. What would you tell the doctor? Hmm. Nothing, then. Nothing. <laughs> Shall we keep reading, Papa? In the next chapter, Aristotle outlines the nature of happiness and family. Happiness, family. I haven't been richly blessed with either. Ben's a penny-grubbing trickster. <laughs> Oscar's a proud illiterate. Strange, Regina. You turned out to be my only son. Someday I'd like to take you to Greece. Greece, Papa? Yes, you might even settle down there. Think of it. To read Aristotle in the shadow of the Parthenon. Wouldn't you like to go? Well, I don't know, Papa. I'm afraid I might get homesick. Homesick? For a collection of yokels held together by a few strands of cotton and a common defeat? It's the only place I know. I've never been farther away than Mobile. Uh, you'd rather stay where you can be near uh, Horace Giddens. That's what you mean, isn't it? You know better than that, Papa. Ben thinks up one of his schemes to annoy you and Oscar chimes in like he always does. Oh, it was such a nice afternoon, and now you've spoiled it all. I'm, I'm sorry, darling. Of course I could try if you want me to. Try what? Going on a trip. Maybe I might like it after all. And where would you uh, like to go? I didn't say I would like to go. I said I could try. Mobile? Papa, you're awful. You started this conversation. Wasn't even thinking about going away. Where would you want to go? Answer me, Regina. I don't want to go. I told you I'd much rather stay here. I want you to go. All right, Papa. Where to? That's what you're going to tell me. Someplace up north? Oh, of course. You love the north. Philadelphia for music, New York for the theater, Boston for literature. What shall it be? Whatever you say, Papa. Of course they... Do make beautiful dresses in Chicago. <laughs> John, darling, I couldn't wait to see you to tell you the wonderful news, so I'm sending this note over with Jake. I've arranged everything. I talked Pop into letting me go to Chicago. You'll come with me and we'll be married there. When Papa finds out, he'll have a fit, of course, but I... Here's Act Two of Another Part of the Forest, starring Walter Houston as Marcus, Vincent Price as Ben, and Anne Blythe as Regina. It's the following morning, 
Marcus Hubbard has just joined his two sons at breakfast when an unexpected visitor enters the dining room. Come in, Colonel Isham. You're up early just to talk about cotton. I'm here about your son, Oscar. Me, Colonel Isham? But what did I do? Early coffee for Colonel Isham. No, thank you. Oh? People like you don't drink coffee with people like me. I've had my coffee. Then you'll come again when you haven't had it. I'm here to talk to you for your own good. There's one thing I've never liked, Colonel. It's conversation for my own good. Last night, Sam Taylor was badly beaten up. Oh, what a pity. Eight people identified Oscar as one of the night Riders. Me? Me? But There's I, I... not a man in these parts who wouldn't enjoy swinging up a Hubbard. Next to the traitor who murdered our boys in the war... You Hubbards are the best hated men in the county. Oscar, it seems that Colonel Isham wants to save you from a lynching party. Should I thank him? Yes, sir, Papa. Thank you very much, Colonel Isham. Lynching? This affair's a disgrace to the entire South. But, Papa, I... Your I... son also rode down Jed Phillips, who tried to help Mr. Taylor. Phillips won't be able to work for weeks. But, Papa, I wasn't riding with the clan boys, honest. I, I, I was thinking about it, but... He I... couldn't have been with them, Colonel. Come here, Ben. What makes you so sure? Oscar was here with me all evening. He was reading a book. You would go against eight people who recognized him? Why, Oscar looks like anybody. Colonel, I'm giving you $500. Please use the money to help Jed Phillips. We can take care of Phillips ourselves. Can you? I doubt it. Learn to be poor, Colonel. It has more dignity. And when you see Taylor... Mr. Taylor left the county. He's not coming back. And when you write him, tell him that Marcus Hubbard warned you 15 years ago you were fools to let Klansmen ride around carrying whips. Were you frightened of their riding on you? Good day, Mr. Hubbard. <laughs> it's too bad about Taylor, ain't it, Papa? Of course, now that he's gone, they'll all be coming to you to borrow money. Hmm. $500, not a bad investment. I wasn't lying to Isham for Oscar's sake. This is a mighty big temptation to a man earning $20 a week. Is that all I pay you? Oh, well, you'll be better off when I... When you, uh, what, Papa? Uh, when and if I die. But I may not die. Didn't you know? <laughs> Papa, are you busy, Papa? Wouldn't you like to talk to me or something? I never wanted to talk to you, Oscar boy. Now get out of my office and wait on the customers. Ben's waiting on customers, Papa. Uh, the twenty dollars you gave me yesterday, I put it to good use, Papa. You mean the little salary advance? <laughs> we sure ran tail out of town. That's what you wanted, wasn't it, Papa? Oscar, how much are you drawing here? Sixteen a week. Hereafter, five dollars will go to repay me for the five hundred I gave Isham, who so graciously saved you from a rope. You'll draw eleven. Papa, you can't. Eleven a week. Well, it should be worth, Oscar. It'll only take you a hundred weeks to make it up. You shut up, Ben. Papa, you told me yourself that... A hundred and four, I... Oscar, including the twenty. Good morning, gentlemen. Papa show is hard on me. It's unnatural. Why, if a stranger come in, he'd think Papa didn't like me, his own son. Why did you beat up Taylor? Did Papa tell you to? He even gave me $20. And you stand here and let him bully you, you clown. Dad, I can't live on $11 a week. I want to get married. Oh, yeah, that cooch dancer from the Cairo Gardens Cafe. She's huh? a very wonderful person. <laughs> I'm, I'm deeply and sincerely in love. Oscar, you go give yourself a nice cooling sponge bath. It'll make you... Well, Miss Bagtree, Miss Birdie... I'll just take a few minutes, Mrs. Benjamin. Oh, Mom and Cousin John knew where I was. They just about died. Well, what can I do for you, Miss Burton? Well, I, I really came to see your father, but I'm glad you're the one. Well, we've tried very hard, and Mr. Taylor finally said he would do it, but, well, he's gone now. And, well, the truth is, we can't support our people at Lionette. We just can't. Would you, I mean, your father knew. Would you lend us money on our land or our cotton? Or... Well, now, there are that something to think about. I, I just haven't been able to tell Mama about Mr. Taylor. What well, was well, she spent all day yesterday planning how she was going to pay off our people and give Cousin John the car fare. Car fare? John wants to go away. Oh, uh, to uh, Chicago, perhaps? Oh, no, he wants to go back to war. 
He's so unhappy here. Oh, I see. And where will Captain Bagtree find the war? Oh, th there's something going on in Brazil, John said. Uh, how much of a loan were you thinking about, Miss Birdie? Five thousand dollars. I guess I was as foolish about that $5, as I was. Five thousand dollars. You know, uh, tonight is Papa's music evening. He's always in a good humor after his music. Why don't you come, you and Captain John? Well, I'd be most pleased to come. And just one thing, Miss Birdie. Leave everything to me. Don't even mention the loan to Papa. Can you remember that? Oh, yes, Mr. Ben, I'll remember. Well, Ben, what is it? Are you practicing, Papa? Well, your musicians have arrived. What time do you plan to start your music? Well, if they're here, we'll start now. Uh, Papa, I just wanted to tell you I invited Miss Birdie and Captain Bagtree. The Bagtree? Mm, I thought you'd enjoy having quality folks here. <laughs> They've come to beg a favor of you. You, you teasing me? I saw Miss Birdie. Now that Taylor's been persuaded to leave town, she wants us to lend her money on the cotton. With Lionetta's collateral? Of course. But her mother don't know, and she mustn't find out. Uh, what kind of nonsense? The girl don't own the place? Maybe it's not nonsense. Take a note from her, Papa. When her mother dies, she'll be the well, you're one... You're very concerned with people dying, aren't you? Oh, forgive me, Papa. I keep forgetting how that word disturbs you. It's the thing you've been waiting for, Papa. The bag tree's coming for a loan. Oh, Regina, you have been listening, honey? Of course, I don't know anything about business, Papa, but it would be nice to have a few people here to listen to your music. Bag trees in this house? Begging? How much does Miss Birdie want? Seven thousand dollars. On Lionette, seven thousand. The girls are fools. Most girls are, Papa. Oh, uh, no offense, Regina, honey. Come, Regina. You're not going to start the concert, Papa. Not before they arrive. Why not? Now we don't want them to think we're impolite. For seven thousand dollars, they'll think we're most polite. Well, I'd better see to the refreshments, Papa. Mama's ailing. Just like it to take sick when company's coming. What do you want, Oscar? I've got to talk to Papa. Please, Papa, I I'm in trouble, Papa. Are you, Oscar? You still want to hang you? Papa, I'm, I'm in love. Deeply and sincerely in love. But Ben, he keeps talking her down. Ben don't want me to be happy. Your own brother. Of course she is of the lower classes. A ballet dancer at the Cairo Garden. A what dancer? A can-can. She... She's a wonderful girl, Papa. Could I go fetch her here? Could I, Papa, now? What is this, a night at the circus? Please, Papa, this ain't asking too much after what I've done for you. What have you done? <laughs> nothing, Papa, nothing. But, but, but it might amuse you to have a member of the lower classes mixing with the gentry. And um, it'd make Ben awful mad. Go on, get her. Oh, sweet, Papa, thank you. You're what, Oscar? What did you say? I said I'm going to fetch Lorette. I'm bringing her here. You can't. You wouldn't dare. No, wouldn't I? Will you just ask Papa? Stop him, Ben. Well, what do you want me to do? Shoot him? The bad trees will think we meant to do it. Plan to insult them. One of these days you're going to learn about Papa Regina. Maybe tonight when he sees you with uh, John. If you dare say anything to Papa about John, Don't I'll... threaten me, Regina. I'm sick of threats. You'll be much sick of them if I... Oh, Ben, don't. I'm in love with him. But he's not in love with you. Horace Giddens is. Why don't you marry money yourself? Nobody ever asked me. Oh, why, Ben. Any rich girl would be only too happy to have a bookkeeper as good as you. Why, thank you, honey. You're welcome, honey. <laughs> Papa won't like this, John. Dragging me out on the porch, darling, and while he's playing, too. I have to speak with you, Regina. That note that you sent me yesterday. Oh, I'm so happy, honey. Just think we can... I can't go to Chicago. You mean... You don't want to marry me? No. No, I don't, Regina. I never said I did. 
John, come to Chicago with me. I've never pleaded for anything in my life before. I might hold it against you. But I'm no good for you, Regina. By the time you come back, you'll be in love with somebody else, and I'll be in Brazil. Brazil? Bertie's getting some money. I'll be able to leave right away. Where's Miss Bertie getting this money? I don't know. She won't tell me, but she says she'll have $5,000. $5,000? I see. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I love you now. Now go on in. I don't like this punch, Oscar. It don't mean anything. A rat, pop. Here, let me add some brandy, Miss Cincy. That might make it mean a little more. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, my friend's here now. Can you meet her? Oh, me. <laughs> this is Miss Cincy, Papa. How do you do? Finally, thank you. Uh, Lorette just loves music, don't you, Lorette? Yes, indeed. I, I had an uncle who played. He taught me to love music. Did he play the violin, too, like Papa? No, Oski. What did he play, hmm? He had a little drum. He loved Mozart. You told me, remember? Yeah. He sure did. Yeah, Miss Cincy pleases me. Oh, allow me, Miss Bagtree and Captain Bagtree. This is Miss Cincy, whose uncle played Mozart on a little drum. Y yes. Yes, we've already met. Captain, I recollect a few years back you went to Europe. Yes, sir, I did. Then perhaps you'd advise us. My daughter and I are planning a trip abroad. I'd like to, sir, but I don't remember Europe very well. Well, now, what does stay in your memory, Captain Bagtree? Anything at all? The war, sir. Oh, you were happy in the war, were you? Yes, sir. I thought we would win. I never did. Never. From the first foolish talk to the last foolish day. Oh, oh, why, why, John wants to go to war right now. They've been looking for Confederate officers in Brazil, so John will have a chance to fight again for his idea. Now, why don't you choose the other side? Every man needs, uh, well, he needs to win once in his life. I don't like that way of saying it, Mr. Hubbard. Your people deserve to lose their war and their world. It was a backward world getting in the way of victory. Appalling, you still don't realize it. Papa, I didn't bring John here to listen to you be insulting. You brought him here? Show your guest to the dining room, Regina. Maybe he's hungry. I've been waiting for you to join our guest, Regina. Have you, Papa? Or do you prefer to stand here on the veranda? It's fixing up to stop. That's fortunate. Oscar is not a rich man. <laughs> rich, how could he be? On that slave salary you pay him. <laughs> the best I'll come you're sure to repent and help us, Oscar says. After all, when you die, you're going to leave it to him anyway. So why not now, Oscar says. How is he just talking? Oscar has a tendency to lie. He steals a little, too. But if you want him, Miss Cincy... Do have him. Come on, no, let I'll settle this later. Oh, Papa's talking about his own son. Well, no animal would talk about the son that Honey, way. Honey, please. I've been hearing tales about since the girl was born, Mr. Lorette. How please. you got rich, bring it in salt, make it poor, dying people give up everything for you. Honey. And right in the middle of the war, men dying for you. And you making their kinfolk give you all their goods and money. Oh, to take this girl out of here. Come back quickly. Oh, yes, Papa. Sure, yes, sir. Mr. Hubbard. More punch, anyone? And sandwich, Captain Bagtree. I think we'll be leaving now. Good night. Good night, Regina. John, I... I Good night, I... Mr. Hubbard. Good night, Captain Bagtree. You came to beg a favor, and you stayed to be amused. Came to beg a favor? 
from you? Yeah, I'm sorry. We saw me in the cab. Yes, Bruce. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Hubbard. I, I was so hoping we could all be nice friends. Your mother hasn't bowed to me in 15 years. Does she wish to be my nice friend now? I have bad news for you, Miss Birdie. I've decided not to make the loan. What? Why, Papa, you said yourself. Please come another night, Miss Birdie. Just for the music. Without a motive. But, but I'll do anything, Mr. Hubbard. We have a little silver left. Could not Please, have... please, spare us both. Thank you, Mr. Ben. I know you acted as my friend. Papa. What is it, honey? I didn't intend for you to insult the bag trees and make enemies of them. The bag trees have been my enemies for years. Why should that suddenly disturb you? <laughs> You're amused, Ben. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> for the moment. Trying to ruin my life, are you, Ben? <laughs> Pouring liquor down and getting a drunk on purpose. Will you come on outside and fight it out like a man? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you laughing at, Papa? We bring Lorette here to get Ben mad, and then he gets her drunk and you get mad, and that's just what he wanted you to do. <laughs> joke's kind of on you. <laughs> You're full of tricks these days, Ben. <laughs> Miss Brady borrows $7,000 from me, and you keep 2000 Take your chances on nobody finding out. Bad to told you, huh? Oh, what a night. What a night. Ben, you're a clerk in my store, but if you anger me once more, there won't be any job there. Is that clear? Very clear. Papa, you wouldn't condemn a woman just because she has to earn a living by the sweat of a brow. No, no, Oscar boy. So if you want to go away with this ten can girl, what's detaining you? Your permission, sir. Talk sense. You mean money? Well, just a loan, Papa. You see, we go to New Orleans. How much? And well, 10000 would stop me off fine, Papa. Mm, there'll be $1,000 for you on the breakfast table. Get on an early train. Send a Christmas message each year to an aging parent who now wishes you to stop talking. You better start packing, Oscar. You bullied me ever since I was born. But you're going to be on that station platform tomorrow morning and apologize to Miss Finsey. <laughs> Good news. What a $1,000 won't do. And if you're not there... Put that away. Huh? Get out of this room. Yes, Papa. And I'll see you at the station. You've always been frightened of guns, Papa. Any particular reason? You're wearing me thin, Benjamin. Why don't you stop it, both of you? You can do all the squabbling you want to after Mama and I leave for Chicago. It'd be lonely here without you. I, I don't know. I'm, maybe I'll go along. Go along? Don't you want me to? Of course, Pop, only I didn't... Only you didn't plan on such a crowded honeymoon. <laughs> don't look so surprised, Pop. You guessed about Bagtree an hour ago. Of course, I don't think he wants to marry her, but he's a weak man and Regina. Papa, Papa, don't you see what Ben is up to? He wants to marry me off to Horace Giddens, and he's mad because I... Papa, what's the matter? You look so bad. Yeah, you do look bad, Pop. Put your arms around him, Regina, and lie to him like you always do. Oh, Tell him... Ben! Oh. I'll never forget that, Papa, not as long as I live. Pack your things and go and be sure you go far. Get yourself a modest job somewhere, anywhere you are, and I'll see to it that you never get anything better. Yes, Papa. I'm sure you'd try. Regina. You and Ben, too. How could you? I'm in love with him, Papa, and I want to marry him. Oh, now, don't take on, so you just let me go away as we planned. And after a while, John and I will come home and we'll live right here. Are you crazy? You think I'd stay in this house? Otherwise, I... I'll go away and you'll never see me again. I don't think you could stand that. You must have known I'd marry someday, Papa. Maybe next year you and I will make that trip to Greece, just the two of us. Now it's all settled. Kiss me goodnight, darling. Papa! What is it, Lavinia? Braiding up there in your night clothes? What is it? Oh, just uh, uh, hurry. Oscar and Ben, leave them there. Oh. Go back to bed, Lavinia. Please, please talk to your father. Don't let him do this. Please. We'll be leaving for Chicago, Mama, sooner than I thought. No, Regina, I don't want to go. We'll start getting ready first thing in the morning. Good night, Mama, dear. <laughs> A 
curtain rises on the third act of another part of the forest, starring Walter Houston as Marcus, Anne Blythe as Regina, and Vincent Price as Ben. <laughs> It's before breakfast the next morning. Ben is getting ready to leave home, while Lavinia pleads with Marcus to change his mind. What is your son, Marcus? You can't send Ben away. Leave me alone, Lavinia. I don't feel well. If, if you let Ben stay, I'll do anything. I'll go to Chicago. I, of I'll... course you'll go to Chicago. Uh, it isn't easy to live with you, Lavinia. It really isn't. I know. For a long time now, I've felt that being here will it. It made me feel like I was sinning. And you have to make good your sins before you die. That's why the hospital... Stop your crazy talk. I don't like that word, Marcus. It frightens me and you know it. I'll... I'm ready to leave, Mama. No, Ben, no, don't go. Now, Marcus, Mama. tell him to stay. It's a sin, Marcus, a terrible sin. The Lord will destroy this place with brimstone and fire. Yes, he may, Lavinia. But I'm not fretting on it. I've got it heavily insured. <sighs> oh, I must get out of this house. Get out then, Mama, but don't look back or you'll turn into a pillar of salt and he'll sell you eight dollars a pound. I never did look back. For 16 years, I forced myself never to look back. Look back at what, Mama? Marcus, will you let them stay? Marcus! All right. I'll tell you, Ben. Yeah? It was my birthday. Your pop had been gone on one of his salt running trips. Yes, Mama? He promised to be back for my birthday, and I was afraid something had happened to him. I knew he had no pass through the Yankee line, so that night... Not the night of the massacre, Mama. Yes, I... I walked to the memorial grounds. Go to your room. But there were no memorial grounds then, Mama. No. Just the camp on the hill. Didn't the sentry stop you? Lavinia, go to your room. I saw no sentry. Only the Yankee soldiers sneaking down the hill. Yankee soldiers? Who was with them, Mama? Now I'm standing here listening to this foolishness. I'll tell you why. Because you're afraid. Afraid of a bungler who tried to steal $2,000 from me or a crazy woman who dreamed she saw something one night 16 years ago? You better get ready, Mama. We'll call on Colonel Isham, whose son was killed that night. And John Bagtree will remember his twin brother and the Mercers who lost their oldest son. And <laughs> well, we don't have to go any further, Papa. It'll be the biggest, happiest lynching in the history of Bowdoin County. Yes, I don't believe in Lincoln. You leave that to me, Mama. No, Ben, I don't. Uh, uh, you're, you're losing your witness, Benjamin. Now uh, stop this nonsense and get out of here. No, Marcus. Our son is staying. You want your hospital built, don't you, Lavinia? Your hospital, Marcus. To make up for all those poor boys who died that night. Of course. Let's go to my library, Lavinia, and start making plans. All right, Mama. You talk to Papa, and I'll talk to Colonel Ashton. He'd be only too glad to ask you if I'm telling the truth. No, Ben, I won't have anything to do with a lynching. But would you lie, Mama? Would you tell a lie? Answer him, Lavinia. There'll be no lynching, Marcus. I'll plead for your life with all my heart. Yes, me too, Papa. But I'll plead for you just as hard as I know how. <laughs> Better than that, I'll come by tomorrow morning and cut you down from the tree. Hey, you no, no. How did the Greeks bury fathers who were murdered. Tell me, Papa, and I'll see to it. Benjamin, don't talk that way. You gave him the right to talk that way. You did, Lavinia. It's on your soul. No, Marcus. I... All I want is for Ben to stay. I'm even ready to go to Chicago and see your doctor. What doctor? Why, well, the doctor Ben said you wanted to examine He lied. You're a very ugly man, Benjamin. Well, are you ready, Pop? For what? To write a slip of paper saying you sell me the store for one dollar. <laughs> There's a pen on the table. Your store, your bonds, your mortgages. I leave you your proper share in my will. Might even increase it if you behave. <laughs> You're making fun of me again, Papa. I mean what I'm saying, and you know I do, and it's the last time I'll say it. Take half, take half of everything. Stop bargaining. I want everything you've got. Is that clear? When you've got it in writing, bring it to me. Well, are you waiting for something, Papa? Well, to tell you the truth, I'm trying to think of some way out. A way out? Well, I consider you a very lucky man. You'll die in bed. 
You'll give me enough for a clean bed. Why, of course, you're my father. <laughs> You'll find me at your desk, Papa. Counting cash on hand. <laughs> Jake, Jake, come here. Take this envelope over to Lionette. There's five thousand dollars in it. Give it to Miss Birdie and tell her to forget about last night. Yes, sir. And tell her that I wish Captain Bagtree the best of luck in Brazil. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, tell Coralie to set my breakfast plate at the head of the table. But what is it, Ben? That's where your part. I'll say it again, Jake. At the head of the table. Papa, where are you? Papa! My goodness, Oscar, I'm trying to eat breakfast. Papa isn't here. Well, if he isn't here, he must be upstairs. Well, no, Rex, waiting for me at the railroad station. Papa! Oh, I was hoping you'd be gone by now, Oscar boy. There's a thousand dollars on the table. He promised, but it ain't here. I, I even crawled under the table. Maybe you better go crawl some more. Well, good morning, Regina. Oh, good morning, Oscar. Where do you think you're sitting? Right here, honey, at the head of the table. That's Papa's chair. Hmm, we'll be sitting next to each other, and I'll be able to keep my eye on you. Regina, help me. Papa! Papa, the money's not there. Papa, please answer. Give it to me, sir. Uh, speak up. Oh, it's getting late. The money, you forgot to leave it. Uh, you're screaming, Oscar, and a voice injured at your age is possibly never recovered. The money isn't there because I didn't put it there. Would you like to give him a little explanation, Ben? Or will I? I am eaten. Oscar, I assure you that I am most sorry for many reasons. None of them having anything to do with you. Well, what's all that mean? That you're not giving me the money? It means exactly that. It means that Papa has found a new way of postponing for a few minutes an unpleasant writing job. Where would you prefer me to have my breakfast? The tray in my room? Or here? Or well, anywhere you like, Papa. After you've finished writing. My house is your house. There isn't any chance I could get on a train without you interfering with me. Papa, what's the matter with you? Ask Ben, ma'am. He's changed. Do you think it's age? Who do you think you are? A man who believes you've handled yourself very badly. It's a shame, Regina. You're beautiful, smart. You could have made a brilliant life. Instead of 20, you have to start picking up pieces. I like the pieces. And I'm off to pick them up right now in Chicago. No, honey. Right here in Bowdoin. Because you're not going to Chicago. What are you talking about? Papa hasn't got any money anymore. No money at all. <laughs> Just giving it all to me. To you? <laughs> what makes you think he'd give it to you? Well, I'm the oldest son. Isn't that the way with ancient kings? Papa? Papa, where are you? You're starting to sound like Oscar, honey. <laughs> But she talked to Papa. Maybe he can quote an appropriate line from Aristotle. Oh, come on in, Mama. Sit down. Charlie just brought in some fresh coffee. I just come to say goodbye, Ben. I have to go away. What for? I can't lie about your father, but I want no part of a lynching. Oh, that part has been canceled, Mama. Uh, Papa's examined his conscience and repented. Then you can stay? Mm-hmm. Bob has decided to retire. He's transferring the business to me. Oh, oh, it's a great trust, then. It's sinful money. But if you put it to good, you... Oh, I will, Mama. Don't you worry about that. Ben, what have you been doing to Papa? A great deal. Do you believe me now, honey? You can't stop John and me. Certainly not. Marion, people in love should be poor. Then what happened? Papa didn't tell you. I'll find out. And the day I do, I'll pay you back so you'll never forget it. Why, Oscar, what's the matter with you? He didn't wait. Lorette's gone to New Orleans without me. I begged and I pleaded. <laughs> Deeply and sincerely. Oh, you go ahead and laugh. <laughs> I laughed too, Regina, when I saw your true love looking like a statue of Napoleon off to the wars on the same train. So you arranged that too? That's enough. I'm sick of love. I don't want to hear any more about it. You don't want. What Oscar, the... you go follow your can-can sweetheart and get yourself a wharf job loading bananas. And you early maturing flower, you can go any place you want. See what it's like to be without Papa's money. Oh, of course, you both can stay. 
You and your great plan, Regina. Why, Papa was the only person didn't know about you and John Bagtree. Papa and Horace didn't. <laughs> oh, Oscar, uh, get me a pen and paper. I have an errand for you. You don't have to get married, Regina. Just because he tells you to. He can go away and I can start again, just as I started once before. When you did whatever Ben made you do, did you realize what you were doing to me? Did you care, Papa? I cared very much. And what good did that do? Here's your bill of sale, Ben. And thank you, Papa. And here's your dollar. Pen and ink, Ben. Oscar, I want you to take $2,000 to Horace Giddens with this note I'm going to write. And uh, tell him Regina will be very happy to see him. <laughs> ben, then about the money for the hospital. Not right now, Mama. But then you said... Now sit down, Mama. You haven't had your coffee. No, Ben. Thank you, but I'm leaving. I'm going back home, back to Piney Woods. Oh, you don't mean that, Mama. How can we get along without you? I don't know. Deep down, I guess maybe I don't care. No, I just want to go out and get a breath of air. You're just upset, Mama. You're tired. No, I'm not tired. And I'm not afraid. But, Mama, everything's going to be fine now. We're going to have big money. Oscar, Regina, <laughs> even Papa. I know what's best for all of them. And for you too, Mama. Why, someday we might even build you a house. No, Ben. You'll always be busy. You'll have to be busy because of a lonely man. An empty man. Seems funny to say, but... I don't like you, Benjamin. I don't like any of my children. I just feel sorry for them. Oh, don't take it so hard, Ben, honey. Whenever you're lonely, you can come and have dinner with us. <laughs> with Horace and me. Lavinia, wait, I... Uh... She's gone, Papa. Yes, I... I do believe she's gone. Uh, Regina, honey, pour me a cup of coffee. Carly, we need some more coffee. No, pour what's in the pot, honey. But, Papa, there's just enough for one. And Ben's cup is empty. Before our stars return for their curtain call, here's Libby Collins with some important shopping news for the ladies. don't see much of you around Hollywood these days. Well, Bill, whenever I finish a picture, I go right up north to my ranch. I've got some cattle up there i like to keep an eye on. With well, the price of meat, what it is, you should sit up nights with them. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine raising cattle must be lots of fun, Mr. Houston. Oh, I don't know, Ann. It's just one big beef after another. Oh, <laughs> oh now, Walter. <laughs> and what have you been doing to keep busy this summer? Let me see. On the hottest day of the heat wave last week, I was celebrating Christmas. You mean a Christmas tree and a turkey dinner with all the trimmings? All of it, Vincent. A magazine wanted some Christmas pictures for the Christmas issue that goes to press right away. Uh, next December, they'll probably want a picture of you hunting Easter eggs. <laughs> uh, what's next week's play going to be, Bill? Well, Vincent, next week's attraction is the kind that can only happen once a year. Because it's the picture that won the Academy Award as the best picture of the year. Darrell F. Zanuck's production, Gentleman's Agreement. And the star, Gregory Peck and Ann Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> this 20th Century Fox picture is one of the most important events of our season. 
and we've been planning on it for months. So I hope you'll join us next Monday night for Gentleman's Agreement with Gregory Peck in his finest role. None of us will miss that one, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good, Good night. night and many thanks for tonight. <laughs> Leave our brothers' company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gregory Peck and Ann Baxter in Gentleman's Agreement. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Uh-huh.